The research could soon lead to new cancer-fighting foods and drugs. And with so many products already on the market offering some sort of health benefit, how do companies successfully market to consumers? Well, joining us now with the bottom line on some strategies is Rebecca Walker-Naylor, Assistant Professor of Marketing at OSU's Fisher College of Business. Rebecca, thanks for your time. We thanks appreciate for having it. me. You teach this every day, and this is becoming more prevalent uh, in our world, is health foods. It seems every Absolutely. single product claims something. How do you properly market these products to consumers? Well, there are a couple challenges when you are marketing a product that has some kind of a, a targeted physiological improvement, it's that a food is promising something beyond basic nutrition. One of the things you have to deal with is educating the consumer, because often the ingredient or the, the benefit that it's offering is something that's unfamiliar to consumers. So you have to make sure consumers understand, well, what is this ingredient, and what is this health improvement that I'm going to get from it? And a company that's done a really good job with that, with the recent introduction of a functional food, is Dannon, Dannon's Activia Yogurt. When it first came on the market, there was a lot of emphasis on education, teaching consumers, well, what are these probiotics that are in the yogurt? And <laughs> <laughs> Are they going to hurt me, right? Are they going to hurt me? Are they going to help me? Right. What exactly does it mean that they're going to improve digestive health? So a lot of the emphasis was really on education. And that sort of shifted after the product's been on the market for a while that, okay, consumers now know what probiotics are, but now we get to the second issue, and that's, are consumers skeptical? If they, even if they know what the ingredient is, do they believe that it really works? Is it really going to deliver that promised benefit? Yeah, because you see so many packaging items and, you know, in the grocery aisle and you go, yeah, right, that's going to make me taller or whatever the claim is, right? Right. <laughs> so there, there are ways to reassure consumers to uh -huh. deal with that skepticism. And one of them is to have scientific evidence backing up your claim and to be able to translate that science into a way that consumers can really easily understand. So that can be difficult because a lot of the science is emerging science and to try to put that in an easy to process format for consumers that they can get in a 30 second television commercial can be a challenge. So one thing you can do is you can also have, besides just what you're communicating in your advertising on packaging, you can use, say, a website that consumers can go to to get more information if they're the segment of consumers that's really interested in that health claim. And you can also uh, have guarantees. So going back to the Dan example, if you look at their advertising now, what they're promising is the Activia 14-day challenge that if you eat the yogurt for 14 days, they promise that you'll experience an improvement in your digestive health, and if not, you get your money back. And that's a great signal to consumers that the company really stands behind the science that they really do promise that you're going to get the benefit if you try the product. And, and half of your battle and your challenge is to understand consumer behavior. You, you preach consumer behavior a lot. Uh, why is it so important to understand that and how do you figure it out? Okay, well, understanding consumers can be a challenge because there are so many things that go into influencing our behavior as people. And basically what consumer behavior is, is we're understanding the psychology of consumers. So we're taking insights from psychology and applying them not to how consumers live in the world at large, but how do they behave in consumption situations. So how do they behave in the grocery store? And most of us, when we're going to the grocery store, these are common repeat purchases. We're not really that motivated. So how do we break through and get consumers' attention, get them to pay attention to our message? And one of the things we know about how consumers process information is that when they're given information about a health claim and no information about taste, if it's a new product, they have mm -hmm. to figure out how, how good is this actually going to taste. Yeah. What a lot of consumers... Because in my mind, something real healthy doesn't taste good. And that, <laughs> that is exactly what a lot of consumers do. They rely on that intuition okay. if they haven't tasted the product and they think, oh, a food with a health claim, it must not taste very good. Right. Is that one type of consumer? Because you say there's two types, right? Now, what would the other type be? Well, there, we have basically two types of consumers. That's the other thing we do in consumer behaviors. We can segment consumers by, for example, the benefits they're seeking from a product. Okay. And there is a segment of consumers that's highly health conscious. They're very interested in actively managing their own health. And these are the consumers that are going to be most interested in functional foods, in these products that will help them you know, have some kind of improvement in their physical health. So it's not just about preventing disease. It's about how can I maximize my digestive health? How can I boost my immune system? things like that. And those consumers are going to be open to functional foods, sometimes even when the science is still emerging. 
because they're so interested in finding, you know, what's the, the next greatest thing I can do to really maximize my health. So we definitely see a different level of interest in functional foods depending on how interested consumers are in actively managing their health. It really is a fascinating subject and there's so much that goes into marketing, what you see on the package, what the claims are, and there's a, there's a lot behind it. Uh, Rebecca Walker Naylor, Assistant Professor at OSU's Fisher College of Business. Thanks for your time, Rebecca. We Thank appreciate you. it. Enjoyed being here.